Sure. Um, should we get started now, or should we give them some time to come in? Sounds good. Yeah, cool. Um, all right. Let's go to that. Okay, so um, welcome to Intro to Android Development. Um, this is going to be just a quick, roughly one hour workshop on getting um, a bit of a taste on how Android development works and uh, all the tools you need for it. So I'm Kevin, I am uh, a junior now. Semester hasn't started. Can I call myself a junior yet? Rising junior, junior. Um, at, um, in the School of Engineering, um, I do computer science. Uh, been delivering coffee for Bloomberg and Microsoft over the past few summers. I can do a bit of art. Um, I also enjoy uh, the offensive side of, uh, of security. And uh, warning, weeb alert. Um, the, um, the person who wrote your um, the demo and yeah, and um, helps and is the other instructor for the main course is Leslie. Um, she ran errands at Square and Twitch, uh, is an OG Android dev, one of the first, um, yep. Android is a brand new team on AppDev, like in comparison to the other ones, we are a brand new team. And uh, she trusted, she used to trust uh, me to, Android, uh, to edit video for her. I don't think she does anymore. Um, anyone who actually took my course last semester would know why. <laughs> Um, I'm going to be watching the workshops. Um, I'm going to be keeping tabs on the Discord and the Zoom call at all times. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop anything in there. And um, yeah, let's get this started. So um, I'm part of AppDiv. We, uh, we build apps. Uh, those are a few of our apps. Um, now that I think about it, Actually, we, we got we got four out of the five on Android now. Um, Uplift is not an Android. Um, yeah, we, we build apps. We have thousands, tens of thousands of monthly users. It's it's great fun. We wholeheartedly encourage you to join. Um, we run a bunch of different courses from uh, from DPD to Android to iOS to backend. Um, today, this is just going to be a ridiculously condensed um, just portion of the Android course. We're pretty much going to be cutting down about four weeks of content into just giving a taste in an hour. So, um, yeah, let's just, let's just start coding. Just going to set up a few things. Yeah. Cool. So um, there is a link in the workshops to this page. Hopefully you've already downloaded Android Studio. It's kind of a big program, so I really hope you have. Um, in addition, there's the, huh, why is it back to loading? Or is the stream on, oh well. Um, yeah, there's also the, yeah, oh, there we go. The stream is a few seconds out of, yeah. Um, there's also, yeah, we're gonna be, um, it's gonna ask you about which SDKs to download. Um, I just start with Android SDK 23. That is the Marshmallow update, Android 6.0. We are currently on version, uh, like about to enter Android version 11, but Android 6 has like a bunch of, it's pretty much the oldest operating system you'll get on a modern Android device. And so you can learn more about these development kits and how to install them on this page. Um, and so for now, let's just download the starter code and just take a look at the editor for Android Studio. Um, I've already downloaded it, so just take it, um, close that, take it, um, extract it, throw it into a folder and yeah, cool. Let me close this. This is the screen you're going to get when you start Android Studio. It has just, you know, um, the recent projects you've been working on and new projects. So let's open an existing Android project. I'm going to go find it from my desktop. It... There we go. Cool. So it's going to be a classic 
Um, don't worry, it's like folders will change. It'll do a bit of processing. If you've ever used IntelliJ, you're going to be used to this kind of layout. Um, yeah. So the first thing we want to try to do is this is a functioning app. Like this will run. So let's run it, right? Um, open up, uh, go up here, click on this thing. It should, it might not have a device at the time because it's brand new. Um, open up the Android Virtual Device Manager, the AVD Manager under this tab and create a new virtual device. This is what you're gonna be running on. You can uh, run a physical device as well. Um, yeah, you can run on a physical device. Um, for the people who have an Android device, you can go into settings um, and enable developer options. Um, look up how to do that. It's a bit of a quirky process. And in the development options, there will be USB debugging. After that, you can just um, connect your phone to your computer with a USB cable and it will allow to run on your own phone. However, for the purposes of demoing and for the fact that this is completely cross-platform, you can put Android Studio on um, Mac, Linux, Windows, anything you want, and the emulator will run on all of them so you don't have to have an Android device. Um, we're going to open up that manager, create a new virtual device, pick out a phone that you like. Um, I'm going to go for the Pixel 3a and then just download a version of the OS onto your computer. Um, this will take a while. Um, and then, yeah, just set up a new virtual device, use the default settings and click finish and it'll create one for you. I already have a few, so I'm going to be using them. If you run this app right now, a blank screen um, up here. Ah, okay. Um, I guess I'm going to try to speak a bit louder and see what happens. Um, it's so choppy. It might be. Let me adjust. Hello? All right, sounds good. Um, yeah, um, it it might be because like this is hello. Yeah, yeah, it might it might be because this is like eating up a lot of my computer's processing power. Like I might be flatlining my computer a bit here with all the things I'm doing right now. Uh, however, yeah. So here is the demo app in all its glory. There is nothing on screen. Let's change that, why don't we? Um, so I'm gonna leave this off in the corner and let us start with this. So you're gonna find a bunch of files in this tree of things. Um, it's gonna start with the app itself, uh, manifest, which we will not touch for now. Um, you might touch it later on in the course. We will not touch it for now. Java, this is your app name. This is what's gonna show up under, on the essentially to the system of Android and on the Google Play Store. This better be unique um, or else it's not going to be able to go on the Google Play Store. We're going to touch upon that later as well. Here are all the code files. Here are all the class files for your Android app. And under res, uh, resources and layout, you're going to find these, the, um, the actual files for how to display something on screen. So if I just, we're going to make a list today. Uh, we have actually a bunch of like additional code in there that will help with that. Um, so I'm going to create a little text view and using these little part, uh, bits on the side, I'm going to bind them to the top and to the right. These are constraints. This is called a constraint layout. This is the now default kind of layout for Android since the screen 
size changes drastically on Android between devices and even might have two screens uh, either side by side or vertically, we don't know, we can't like just position pixel by pixel where it's going to be on a phone because you don't really know how the phone's going to look. So instead, we use constraints. It's going to be about roughly this far from the top, uh, roughly say this far from the side. You can see me just changing and changing numbers here and it moves on screen here. I'm going to change the text out to um, uh, tasks app for now. Um, and then I'm going to scroll down on this list of attributes and change the text size. Yes, text size over to big. I like big. All right, cool. Um, there are multiple editors for changing like what things show up on screen. As I'm just going to like change itself. Um, there are multiple editors for editing this. this is Properties were changing. Yes. Hello. Really? Sure, it's not on your end. I mean, yeah, it's like, it, it actually doesn't need to be there. Um, but yeah, it might just because I'm maxing out my computer. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah. Um, I'd like to point out, I'm like using a pretty beefy computer here. Like this thing is like a gaming laptop. <laughs> So, yeah. So if anyone's wondering about the processing requirements of Android Studio, heavy. Um, yeah. So this is like, you, you'll now see that it's been replicated on screen about this far from the top, about this from the sides. And you can, you'll notice that like this changes depending on like which size of phone we're going for. If it's like a taller phone, if it's like, um, you can like just on the settings here, just change what size phone it will look like. Um, so yeah, we, we now have put text on screen. This is, uh, this is Hello World. Hurrah. Um, but we're going for a, like a notes app, like a, like a, you know, a reminders app. So let's add a few things here. Uh, let's go to layouts and I'm, I want a, let's. There we go. Let's go to containers and pull out a recycler view. This is, there are two kinds of ways to display a list on Android. There is the list view and the recycler view. The list view is the older one and the less powerful one. And the recycler view is the new one and, you know, the, uh, but it's also the more complex. One. It has like a lot of little things. Um, hmm. Hi. All right, let's 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 modify the constraints, bind it to the sides of the, there we go. That's better. Um, wrap content for the width and height. That way it's not, there we go. Um, magically match constraint, probably be better. There we go, yeah, cool. And then let's bind this to the bottom of this so that it has somewhere to go. So your task list items will display here. We've actually recycler view, name it recycler view, uh, and give it an ID. The ID is what the code tracks these um, everything by. Recycler view, why is this not, there we go. So underneath the, uh, the first property in a view item, in something on the screen is generally the ID. The ID is what everything is tracking 
um, your yeah, what everything is tracking everything else by. So the ID here is what is tracking. Uh, so I gave it the ID of recycler view, and the code in here should be able to track recycler view. Um, actually, it should be able to track very easily. So if I type recycler view now, it has now bound the uh, it has now bound the activities like um, object to this, and so I can now change properties on the recycler view from here. We're not going to do that yet. Um, let's do a few more things while I comment that out. Um, we want a way to put an item in our tasks, right? So let's go to text and I want a way to enter some text. There we go. This is called an edit text. It is the uh, input method for Android. Uh, it is the text input method for Android. You'll see this on like a lot of Google Forms. Um, and no, I don't want default text to be in there. Yeah, that looks good. And I'm just going to name it edit text. Cool. And finally, we want a way to say, cool, uh, now that we've done that, we can put it into our system. So I'm going to put a button down right here. Uh, bind it to the left and bind it to the bottom. Let's bind it to the bottom. And that should be good. You are now bound to the left. And your width is now constraint matched. There we go. That looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to give the button some text. I'm going to say add. Um, yeah. And now we have approximately the screen you want for a task app. If my voice cuts out again, <laughs> anyway, at least we nailed it. No, I, I was actually, I, yeah, I was saying, uh, if my voice cuts out again, we will know what's happening. Uh, it does. We, we now know what's happening. It is the, it is the build system. Yeah, we, we have concrete proof. It is in fact the build system. It's just a little too heavy for what we're, yeah. Okay. We are, we are men of science. Indeed we are. All right. So. Now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, we now have like a rough screen with like some tasks to put on it, right? Cool. So let's set up the recycler view. A recycler view needs a few things. Um, you could find this in chapter four of the uh, Intro to Android textbook. Um, we need a manager and an adapter. Um, the manager essentially handles the changes in it and the adapter is what um, handles all the displaying of list items in there. So we've actually created like a few variables with that name for you. Um, so let's just do to do view. Um, let's see, to do view manager first. Let's use the manager first and let's set that equal to a linear layout manager with this. Yep, it needs a context, it says, right here. Man, I hate how Android has so much jargon in it that I can't explain it anymore. Uh, all right. Um, and it needs an adapter. So we're going to set that to to-do adapter. Because um, we've actually created one for you, um, which has like a bunch of, you know, mildly obscure code. So this is all done for you and we're just going to use it and we're going to apply it to to do list i have um this is kotlin by the way um the language we're working with is called kotlin uh dot kt it is a java virtual machine compatible language that has like a bunch of really nice features like the fact that we can do recycler view right now 
and actually access the recycle view is a feature of common. Um, in Java, you do something along the lines of recycler view, recycler view uh, is equal to find view by, uh, by ID and then r.id.recycler view. It's like this simplifies Android development life quite a bit. Um, yeah, so we actually have a recycler view variable up here um, just to give it a better name. So I'm going to set that to the recycler view that we've created. Recycler, I can't type today. Um, however, I'm also going to change a few things. That's what this dot applies for. I'm going to give it, I'm going to set its layout manager to the layout manager that we've created. And I'm going to set its adapter to the adapter that we've created. Um, for reference, this is equivalent to doing just uh, recycler view dot uh, layout manager equals to do view manager. This is equivalent to doing that twice. It's just simplifying it by compressing it into a nice little code block. Um, yeah. And now we should have bound this adapter. And yeah, we should have bound this adapter and this manager that we've, uh, that this is a default Android manager that we've created and bound it to that recycler view. And then the final thing that we have to do is to just be able to add list items to that list, right? To be able to go in here and type something and have it show up. Right now you can type something and click these buttons, but they do nothing. So what we're gonna do is we want to listen to if the button hears a click, right? which is done in Android by going button or whatever the name of your button is, uh, the ID of your button is, we have it set as button. So it simplifies things. Button dot set on click listener. Um, and then just go and every, and any code in here, uh, is activated when you click the button. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to go and check if the, um, if the edit text, the text input field is blank. Uh, so I'm just going to check its text field and I'm going to go is not blank. Lovely little features in Kotlin for strings. Uh, and then just add it to the list. There is a mutable list here. So a list that can change of type to do item. This is a object that was that we've created to handle all of the uh yeah all things in to do so i'm just going to add a new to do object to do item and i'm going to give it a status of status dot incomplete and i'm going to give it the text of edit text dot text dot let's just make sure it's a string and then finally um to make sure that it shows up in the right order actually let's uh let's leave that for later um edit text dot uh so now it should add it to the list um yeah let's give this a try I'll cut out now. And hopefully my voice should be back by now. Cool. So, that's there. Add. Let me just double check. Did I do anything here? Not sure why that just um recycler view dot 
let me just check if she puts uh, if Leslie put a notify changed. No, not really. No, if I. Mm, no, no, it wouldn't be that. It would be adapter. To do view adapter dot notify. That has changed. Um, cool. So this just quits. Make sure that I've been working with has changed. Right. Testing had yes. All right, so it works out. So now I can just put in any text, and it will show up in this list. Next, Add. working. Add. Cool. So now we have tasks app. That that was really all there was to it. Like this is a working tasks app in Android. And it's automatically sorting for me, which I thought I had to sort the list. All right. Um, yeah. Um, by the way, the first person to find a bug in this, there is a bug. I've, like, there is a bug that appears in this. First person to do so uh, gets a custom uh, emote. Just send me a PNG. Uh, just send me, like, just tell me the bug that you found and potentially how to fix it. And then just send me a PNG and I'll add that to the Hack Our Campus Discord channel um, as an emo. I did get permission for that. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> there is a funny thing right now where essentially you can keep adding because it doesn't clear this, right? Let's change that. So let's just do a few quality of life changes. Uh, edit text dot, um, clear focus. This way, the keyboard is no longer on it. Edit text dot, uh, text dot clear so that it clears the actual content of it. And then, ah, uh, I forgot to leave that in the final bit of code, didn't I? Um, okay. So this, this in this case, just copy, like Simon says, do what I do because this piece of code is get system service input method thus as an input manager input me input method manager dot hide soft input from window it dot window token zero this this is just this is just Android jargon for lowering the window. You'll find this on Stack Overflow. You can find it anywhere else. Yeah. So now, uh, testing it. Add. Clears it and drops the keyboard. Um, and yeah, that... Uh, we can do a few more quality of life changes. So inside layout, there is to do single cell. Uh, why is this so zoomed out? There we go. Um, this is actually the bit of layout. Uh, this is actually just like a single version of what we're looking at here. And so to make this look, to change the look of it, um, you can just modify this part. Um, so I'm going to give it a, what do we give it? What was that thing? There we go, horizontal divider to make it look a bit better. I'm gonna put it underneath the constraint, the cell status, and I'm going to bind you to the bottom of this layout, bind the left and right to the actual, uh, nope, hold on. Bind the left to the wall, bind the right to the wall. And then let's give this a four pixels below that. There we go, that looks pretty good. And you know what? I'm gonna give you four pixels below the top as well. This should now space out our habit. And my voice is got it. Yeah. 
So quality of life change, it now has a nice little border at the bottom. Working, add, help, add. And when you click something, it goes to the bottom of the list. Um, I, yeah, no, this didn't explain. I didn't really get to explain much because it was all charged. All right, so um, let's get a bit more of an in-depth view on what the adapter is doing then. You'll notice that in here, we are, we have a list of the items that was sent in this mutable list. This is a reference to it. Um, it makes sure there's a radio button in there. It is a, wow, this is going to be completely unintelligible to a newcomer. Huh. I think I'm just going to plug my horse and just call it a T. <laughs> um, yeah. So what we're doing here is this is, um, this is the extends. Um, yeah. This is extends in Kotlin um, and essentially just says this should be of something of this type. If it's a class, it is extending it. If it is a variable, it is of that type. This is how you set a type in Kotlin. Um, it says private late initialize. Um, so this, can, this doesn't have to be initialized until later and it's a variable. Um, in Kotlin, you can do a bunch of fun things like var and just give it a name. And uh, yeah, test and it'll work just fine. It's much like um, Python in that respect or JavaScript if you like use the let variable, I mean the let command. Um, really, yeah, that was, that was the entirety of the demo app I wanted to do. Half an hour, nice. Is Zoom still going? Is anyone still here? <laughs> All right. Yeah, absolutely. Does I? Oh, yeah. That's what I should have been doing. It's like I don't see people in front of me. So, does anyone have any questions? Because while this will be, this is being recorded, and we'll put this up on YouTube for all of you to you know, just look over what actually, what actual code I'm running. And we've also put the, um, we've also put the final code up on our website already. Um, you know, this is, um, this was meant to just be like a taste of how Android development's being, how Android development on native Android is done. You set up the screens through views in the layout. You set up like the code inside these functions that are named the same thing and then call the context view of that actual layout and you use Kotlin to write it. A new, quite useful little language that's a lot like Swift in many cases um, that nicely works things out for you. You interact with things on screen using listeners, on click for buttons, on changed for edit text, and um, the main thing that you see in a lot of apps, the big list of things, the whole, like, you know, YouTube's list of videos, um, you know, the list of posts in Twitter, that's just done through a thing called the recycler view. And to use a recycler view, you need a manager and an adapter. I, yeah, that was um, speed run through lessons one through four. Does anyone have any questions? Um, post them in Zoom or in Discord. Uh, could you repeat that? Sorry, didn't quite that. Is it becoming more like developing with React? Mm -hmm. You, like a lot of developments, it's actually whatever you make it. There actually is a very popular um, 
framework, I think called... I forgot exactly what it's called, but it essentially is like it makes Android development more React-like. It is a React-like development framework where you can just, where if some a change happens, it'll just be put on screen and things are like done in a similar manner to web development. Um, it already is quite like web development, even from the start, since, you know, you're working with mildly HTML-like files and you know, nesting things in one another and putting views in one another. Um, ah, there we go. Um, you didn't use Android Studio at all. Is there a point? You didn't use Android Studio at all. Is there a point where it could be useful or the windowed projector program is... No, this is Android Studio. This is a... Uh, th this program is Android Studio, what I'm developing in right now. This is the Android Studio app and the windowed projector program is able to get all the work done. Oh, oh, as in like being able to just design everything in here rather than in code. This is actually just a luxury you get. Um, and for fine changes, fine tuning things, a lot of people actually, and Leslie is insistent on this. She loves using like just coding in XML and hates the drag and drop editor. Um, like people will have different views on this. I'm the kind of person to use like GitHub desktop for most of my Git purposes, despite knowing the command line, right? So it is, a very, it's a very nice tool that you can just, you know, if you know how to use it, just drag and drop things, make them fly. Um, however, it's like if your team is giving you like special designs on Figma and you have to make something exactly this close to the wall, you might want to use like just edit it in your actual code here um, where you can do like a lot more fine tweaking of what everything is. Um, let's say I wanted to set the buttons uh, the background tint, so not change the button itself, but change the color to blue. And I wanted to make it so that the text color is uh, white, uh, white, white, at color. Uh, you know what, script, all Fs, that's, that's white, yep. Um, and if I wanted that, and I go back to design, blue, right? It, it, you can do designing in both the drag and drop editor and in the code itself. It's quite convenient that way. So you don't have to just tinker around with, you know, the specific syntax of something because it gives you a lot of it right here, all the controls right here to pick out of. It's really convenient. Um, questions, more questions, please. I need to pad the timing. <laughs> uh, Bunch. Any question? Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. This just like if you open up any XML file, there is the code tab, the split view tab, where you can see both uh, your code and what's moving at the same time, and the design tab. This is newly added. I love it. Um, Yeah. Um, I actually don't know how to develop an iOS. I don't have a Mac, but um, <laughs> right. It's it's entirely preference based, right? Some people like developing in just they know how it looks in their head, and they know how to just write down the code in a way that it shows up the right way on screen. Um, and some people really like the visual element where they can just, you know, take an element, pull it on, modify it whichever way they need to, and just put it out there. And that's their prerogative. Um, it makes, it does make development very nice though. And like Android also has like a bunch of very convenient um, templates. Essentially, um, the screens, each screen on, each screen on screen is called an activity in Android. Um, and you can 
pretty much the most common screens that you will be using in Android are provided to you um, in this really nice little uh, dropdown. You can see um, what we're using right now is an empty activity. It has nothing but like the top little uh, text bar at the top. You can actually make that go away as well if you want a full screen activity. Uh, in fact, here it is. Here's a full screen activity, right? Um, you can get a scrolling one. You can get one with a navigation drawer built in. You can get a settings one. It's all nicely like, you know, pull out a new screen for you. Um, here, I want a new base acti activity. I want to call it, this is my uh, display new stuff activity. And, uh, oh, right, no, no spaces, right? Display new stuff activity. Um, and it will give it a layout name that will show up here. It'll give it a title that will show up up here. And it's part of this using this source language. Finish. And it will spend a few seconds adding it to this is taking surprisingly long. So we added a few things um, to the code and a few and a bunch of XML files. So the cradle. Um, but this is also why people sometimes like using that's the template creator because it does add like a bunch of things that you may or may not want depending on what you're doing. Um, yeah. Um, give me one second. <laughs> Um, actually, let me, uh, yeah. Um, so why do we develop for Android, right? It holds a vast majority of the global market share. And if we're really intent on kicking WeChat off of the Western app stores, it's going to hold even more of the global market share. Um, it has 2.5 billion active devices. That's practically a third of the population of the world at this point. Um, it's the biggest platform in emerging markets shows up a bunch in India, a bunch in China, all across these Southeast Asia and a bunch of places when like the iPhone is a bit too expensive and you can get an Android phone for much cheaper with about the same features. Um, it has an active open source community because Android itself is open source and you can do a bunch of crazy things with it. Um, you know how some people do dual, uh, dual boot the computers to have both Linux and like Windows running on it or Windows and Mac OS running on it? You can put two copies of Android on your phone at once. It's, I don't know why you'd want to do it, but I have in the past and it was fun. Um, you can develop for anything. It is all inclusive. Um, you can develop on Windows, Linux, Mac OS. It doesn't matter if you have a phone, don't have a phone, have um, a different kind of computer. It all works. And most importantly, to get something on the Google Play Store, the barrier for entry is comparatively incredibly low. On the App Store, I think it costs about $100 to put a single app on there. For the Google Play license, you pay $25 once with a single Google account. And that is now, you can now permanently just drop um, apps onto the Play Store for free forevermore. Just a one-time payment for just upgrading your account to a developer account and the entire Play Store and all of the devices it reaches are open to you. And you don't even have to go to the Play Store. You can download APKs off the web. You can sideload. Android is so open because of that. It's so customizable. And it's such a nice platform to work on because of that. As such, we have, like the, um, we have an Android development course. And it's really nice to, yeah, OK. Um, yeah, we, um, as such, we have like the intro to Android um the intro to Android development course where we can teach you from start to finish. Like this was a condensation of like four lessons that I ad libbed on the fly, but we have like, um, a textbook and a, we're working, we will work through like teaching you Kotlin, showing you how views work on a simple scale, 
um, making them work with a list, making them work with more complex lists, making them work with like uh, making more complex apps that do different things, accessing the camera, accessing the gyroscope, accessing all the little things about Android that um, like make a phone a phone, the GPS and whatnot. Um, all of that will teach and then we'll then run you all through uh, on the uh, app dev runs, the hack challenge at the end of our courses where you can get together with designers, uh, iOS developers, and backend developers to create a whole full-fledged experience like we have on our main team we've done for Eatery, for Transit, and so forth. And yeah, that's... Um, that's the Android workshop. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Han. Yeah. We're... Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Han. And um, I'll see you all in the rest of the hackathon. Enjoy it.